Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our admins. So we received this message, then it had to be translated from Isuzulu, and uh, I'm be reading this story in English. So the narration of the story, it reads like this. Hello, my brother, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? My brother, I am a 44-year-old South African woman. So ever since me and my husband went our separate ways, and I then taught myself how to run my own small business, my husband he was someone that had a lot of money so the problem that i was facing in my marriage was that of abuse my husband he used to abuse alcohol and whenever you would have gone out to drink one thing that i'll know each and every time when he would come back this was after he had infected me several times with so many STIs. I don't think that there is any STI that is here on F that I have never been treated for. So the more that I kept on getting all of these STIs, there were times that I started to refuse. Each time when he would come back home drunk, when he would try to touch me, then I'll tell him that I am tired of being infected and being reinfected again and again and again with these STIs since he was someone who believed in traditional stuff and he believed that you are not supposed to go to the hospital. So each and every time when he would have an STI, what he will do is that he had his other traditional healer whom he would visit and then they would give him some herbal mixes to clean his system but this was not working at all because he kept on sleeping with so many young girls from the area that we were staying as well as at the nightclubs where he used to go and drink his beer he would sleep with different women so he always had these STIs and because of him I ended up having an HIV infection. So each t each and every time when he would come trying to sleep with me, then I would tell him that I am tired of being infected and being reinfected with these STIs. That was when the physical abuse started. He started to abuse me physically and he would hit me and then you would come and have sexual intercourse with me but this was forced sex and it was really rough and whenever he was drunk he would last for many hours on top of you even when you feel that it is not nice that was when you would be enjoying the pain that you will be feeling in that moment that is what would make him to feel as if he is enjoying the sex that he will be having with you so i told my mom and my mom said it is fine if i wanted to walk away i should walk away and me thinking of fighting with him in court i knew that i was not going to get anything because he claimed that he was more educated than i was and he was more connected than i was and he could afford better lawyers but at least when we went to court there was a little bit of a settlement that i was given i then used that little bit of money to upgrade myself and I started my own small business. So I am someone who really love baking and cooking. Even right now, I managed to secure some contracts with, dif with different supermarkets that I cannot mention by their name with fear of losing those contracts where I go and I supply some of my baked stuff because now I have a small bakery that I am operating in this town that I am staying. So it is like a home-based bakery but i supply most of the supermarkets that are in our province and mostly in my town so i used that money to do this little investment so you know when you are in business it is very complicated and i know that this story that i am t and when you are in business it is very complicated especially when you are trying i understand that there are people who are speaking about jobs but when you are starting your own small company for you to afford a local worker it is very expensive because there are a lot of processes that are involved so i ended up looking for someone who was a foreign national so that i can just pay that person your regular salary 
the amount of money that I was paying to my maid, that was the same price that I was paying to these other two girls that were from Zim. And these girls, whenever there was not too much work at my bakery, then they would end up working as my maids. So I was actually using them at the bakery as well as at my house. I then opened up a small restaurant just close to the taxi rank. Then there was this other girl from Zim, the one who was much, much light skinned. The other one, she was darker. She had this other dark skin tone. This girl, whenever she was operating the till on that day, you will know that the money that will come into that restaurant, it was just too much. So my boyfriend that I was dating at that time, he was the one who first noticed that this is what would happen whenever that light-skinned girl when she would be at the till then the amount that she will cash in on that day it will be double or triple the amount than when the other girl who was darker skinned when she was on the till she would just bring your regular uh, she would just cash in your regular money that we expected so I ended up favoring this light-skinned girl and I even brought her into my home and I started to treat her as if she was my own daughter because she was slightly a little bit older than my own daughter. Even when she was in my house, and that was when I saw the blessing. You know, these things that they call their marine spirits in Zim, those things, they will bless you. I actually saw it with my own two eyes. The moment that I was staying with this girl in my own house, there was so much good luck that was going on in my life. Whenever I would lack something, then one of my business partners will actually call me so that they can chip in with whatever that they wanted to give me and whenever this girl would have gone back to her country that is when i'll see that the good luck that i would be having when she was around that good luck it will just mysteriously disappear so this girl when she came back i then sat with her down it was me and my boyfriend and that light-skinned girl from zim and i spoke with her and i said i just wanted to know if she has noticed that at the shop at our restaurant whenever she is selling there is always a lot of money that she will cash in on that day what does she notice that this is what happens to her and she told me that all her life things has been like this even me picking her up just from the street randomly she had had a dream about it that she was going to be picked up by a random woman who was going to ask her if she wanted a job so i was shocked and i said these things how do you control them then she told me that in their own family this is what they do they go to the river as well as offering some gifts to those river spirits I said, is it possible for me to go with you so that we can offer something? She said that I will try. So in our town, there is this other small river and we went to that river. We bought a lot of stuff. Some of it, she told me that we had to look for those other shops. You know, there are those shops that sell your products from Zim. We went there and we bought some sweets as well as some rice and different stuff that are made in Zim. And we went to that river where we left everything. The very next day, we went there early in the morning. She told us that if our gifts had been accepted, we would not find them. We would only find your empty plates. So these plates that were full of sweets, rice and other things, we didn't leave them out in the open. We found a space just close to the river. That is where we went and we hid all of that stuff. Then the next morning, me and my boyfriend, we then drove with that light-skinned girl and we went to that river. And when we looked at that place where we had hid all of those items, indeed, there was nothing in the plates. The, the plates were there and they were like squeaky clean as if someone had just finished cleaning them what shocked me my brother was that my boyfriend he then started pulling my hand as he was showing me this other girl that he had seen so as for me when i turned around i only saw a girl that jumped into the river then that light-skinned girl told us that this was a marine spirit that we had seen so she said that if i was prepared i could go with her to her own father then 
we could be taken to a traditional healer who could assist us so that we can also get this marine spirit so there we were my brother me and my boyfriend we flew to zim we landed in harare it was such a different place and a change of culture than what i was used to we waited for that girl and she came and they picked us up because she had to go through because she had to use the bus because she did not have her papers then we waited for her she came with her father and they picked us up we stayed at her place because they are also staying there in harare we stayed there until we were taken to this other traditional healer but what we were not told when we were taken to that traditional healer was that when you do not have the gift of the marine spirits when you buy them then there is an expiry date this is what we were not told we were taken to that traditional healer who was an old woman when we went there we were made to kneel down before her and she said do you want to receive the gifts that come from the rivers and i said indeed yes i want to receive these gifts so we were made to pay a lot of money but this money that we paid to this traditional healer what we were doing was that we were just buying the spirit of a man who had died in the river we were taken to this other lake where they do a lot of poaching in brackets lake chivero that was where we were taken and when we arrived at that lake that was when the rituals were done i was made to get into the water but the traditional healer she was on the other side of the i was made to get into that river then the traditional healer followed me immediately i felt as if i was being pulled down into the river and i found myself standing at the bottom of that big lake and at the place where we were staying there was just dry sand and then i saw two women that approached me and that traditional healer that traditional healer told me that i was never supposed to have eye contact with these three beautiful ladies that were approaching us and she made me to stand and hide behind her back those ladies they kept on reaching out to me but she was blocking them and then she told me to kneel down as she was kneeling down then they spoke in their language but they were using yoshona language and i could not understand anything then the next thing i then woke up and when i woke up my boyfriend was hitting me with sand on my chest and on my stomach area and i was busy vomiting the water that i had swallowed in and i was told by my boyfriend and he was crying at that time and he said that i thought that i had nearly lost you i said what happened he then said that we have been looking for you for an o for over an hour and i thought that maybe you had drowned and you were already dead i told him everything that i had seen but the healer then said that these things were not supposed to be spoken during the night we could only discuss about them the next morning we then left that lake and we returned back to that traditional healer's place where we continued with the rituals but in my body i actually felt that there was another spirit like another human being that had possessed my body after the rituals were done we then traveled by bus because we wanted to come back with this girl the light-skinned girl but what surprised me was that when we came back this girl when i started to experience a lot of misfortunes like in my business as well as my daughter when she started to get so sick and whenever she would get so sick she will start to roll on the floor as if she was a fish that had been taken out of the water you know when you take a fish out of the water the way that it will be moving around trying to find a place where it can get some water that is what my daughter used to do before she had passed away this girl she just vanished into thin air but i think that she is still around just that she managed to hide herself from me so at this point i am suffering most of the nights i have regular dreams whereby i find myself at the bottom of that lake speaking with these girls that are from the river they keep on telling me that they are the ones that took my daughter they told me that 
if I can only do another sacrifice, but they do not want to tell me what kind of a sacrifice that I am supposed to perform so that they can bring my daughter back to life. So I want to know, Brother Nashi, is this thing even real that these girls from the river, they can actually bring or raise someone that would have died and then they would raise him up from the dead? Because as for my daughter, we buried her. This was like five years ago since I buried her. So I do not believe that it will be possible for them to bring her back to life. But they told me that if I can just complete another sacrifice, then they would give me great wealth. They said that even when I'll be walking, anything that I would want, if I just call out their names, then they will bring me the riches that are in this world. And if only I can sacrifice. So I asked them, what is the sacrifice that I am supposed to perform? But whenever they visit me in my dreams, they end up laughing, then they disappear. All of these things, the negotiations, whenever they happen, they happen in my dreams and I would find myself at the bottom of that lake. So Brother Nash, I just want to know, and I want people from Zim to assist me, is it true that these maymaids they can actually bring my daughter back to life so that i can return back to zim even though i do not know exactly where this traditional healer stays but these girls they tell me that if i am ready they are willing to direct me straight to that traditional healer's doorstep as for that girl you know that with these sim cards that you get from the makula shops you can just go and get another one so when i tried to reach to her and i found out that her whatsapp no longer double ticks or her whatsapp number that i knew when i tried to call her i can't even get through to her even the girl that used to work for me she stopped working for me because i kept on torturing her because i wanted her to tell me where a sister was and she kept on telling me that she did not know where that girl was at so she stopped working for me thinking that maybe i was going to do something bad to her especially when my daughter passed away i nearly lost it and i kept on torturing that other dark innocent girl so this is my own story and i am looking for anyone who can guide me so that i can actually be fully blessed by this river spirits because I have already started the process. This is what they told me. I am theirs now and this spirit, it is in my flesh, in my blood already. And there is nothing that can be done to remove this spirit that I went and I collected from that lake. I am supposed to perform this final ritual so that everything can be at the place where it was when my story started right there was a message that was sent to me by our admin strange things do happen in this world yo so our dear sister i think what happened was that when she was taken to that lake she actually uh, bought uh, the spirit of someone who had drowned in that lake she did not um, buy uh, the spirits of the marine you only bought a ghost and you purchased a ghost for yourself so this is the spirit that that might be troubling you right now and this thing of performing another sacrifice i don't think could i, I don't think that it is a good idea please let us help you out in the comment section